Let's open our Bibles to Psalms chapter 2. All that's going on, the, wa the wars and the rumors of wars, I kind of wanted to address some things today and give everybody encouragement. We're, we're living in Matthew 24. We're living in the Bible and some of the things we don't like what we hear or see, but we know our eyes are always on the Lord, our eyes are on Him. And that's what I want to encourage us all to do is to keep looking to him. Because if you get your eyes on this world, fear is going to enter in. Yeah. And you can tell you're getting in fear by what you're hearing too much of. And so we got to keep our eyes, keep focused on the Lord and knowing what's really going on. That's why I picked Psalms 2 to start with. And it's, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Verse two, the kings of the earth. I want you to think of what's going on now. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. This has always been from the beginning of time, but we're coming into some end times. So we're starting to see a lot of this happen right before our eyes. So this is a good description for what's going on in the world right now. And instead of the kings of the earth, the Bible says the merchants of the earth, see the world's presidents, see prime ministers here, see the governors here, the merchants of the earth and the rulers of the earth, the power elites or the hidden hand. See all that in Psalms 2, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed. So here we see what's happening before our very eyes. Today we're hearing about wars and rumors of wars. And history shows us Satan's always conspired to eliminate God's people. He hates, he's come to steal, he's come to kill, he's come to destroy. And through these very kings we see stealing of our money, yes. stealing of our hard-earned money through more and more taxes that have increased. And that's his job, is to steal, kill, and to destroy. So we have to know we have an enemy, and we have leaders. We're seeing how they want to eliminate God's people. And I, I was going to preach on part of deconstruction of Christianity. I'm going to save that for next week. Uh, just too much to get in here today. I wanted to emphasize today what I believe is happening. Uh, so he's always tried to eliminate because God's people, because he's in rebellion against God. And because Christians want to follow him, and he's against the Lord, he's also against his people. And so we see more and more this new order that's taking place. Uh, it's Agenda 21, and more people have been asking me about it again. And this is their own uh, words. This isn't my words, but it's their own words. And I want to give you just a quick nutshell of what Agenda 21 is again. And go look up and research this yourself. And then there is sometimes you can find out what their agenda is and underneath it, it will explain what's really happening. Because their terms sometimes make everything sound so rosy and great and it's just great for all and everything's just gonna be wonderful. But when you really study these agendas, and there are articles you can see, they'll say what the agenda is and then they'll say what's really happening. Sometimes I look up Agenda 21 for dummies <laughs> because what they say is so hard to decipher and to figure out. But just in a nutshell, Agenda 21 is the United Nations. This is the yes. 178 nations that have agreed to this um, or they call it sustainable development. And what this is, is worldwide inventory and control. Just think of it as a worldwide inventory and control on everything. And the Internet of Things, they call it. But this is, I just wrote down a couple of things. Inventory and control over what? All land, mm -hmm. all water. Yeah. Now they want this Agenda 2030. I don't know if they'll get it or not, but this is their goal. Uh, to control and inventory everything. Yeah. All land, water, minerals, yeah. all plants, all animals. We're starting to see some of that happening now. Uh, all construction. So you're not just gonna be able to go and do what you used to do in years past because there's gonna be more of a control on who's building, 
who's allowed to build, who's allowed to get things. But it's amazing how the stack and packs just keep coming up, isn't it? Yeah. All over their construction. Uh, all means of production, all energy, and we know they want to push the electric cars and they want to get rid of all fuel cars. Agenda 2030 is their goal. Uh, inventory and control over all education. And we know this is a humanistic agenda that's in colleges right now. And if you have kids in there, you better be watching everything they're doing because there's such an agenda. People don't, I mean, they don't even know who they are anymore. They're, it's the popular thing to be uh, fluid, gender fluid, and the nightmares of what I'm hearing from parents is just unbelievable, the trauma that they're going through. Yeah. So the education, all information, the control of all media of what you hear. This is Agenda 21. And all human beings controlled and inventoried in the world. Just think of it, inventory and control. Agenda 21 is all about inventory and controlling that inventory. The Earth Summit strategy is Agenda 21 is to what? Save the planet. So they say. Agenda 21 seeks to control populations through zoning and seizure of private property, strip national sovereignty, we're starting to see that, reduce the world population. This is one of the goals. They're saying there's too many people in the world. And even control how much meat you're allowed to eat, or you're going to be allowed to eat as part of this plan. And it's all in the name of environment, sustainable yeah. development. The Agenda 21 official policy was adopted by 178 nations, including the United States, to bring it into global socialism. This is globalization. It's not just one country. We're dealing with the new order. The, pl the plan requires every level of community and local government to adopt the principles of sustainable devel development to carry them to every individual. So we see every city is a part of this. And that's why you go try to do something now, you're going to have to have uh, <laughs> a lot of consent and a lot of things are really being controlled heavily. And we're just in the beginning of it. <sighs> and I want to tell you, it's not a time to be fearful. It's a time to be faithful. Amen. It's a time to be faithful to the Lord. And unfortunately, many preachers have been lying and are lying. Everything's wonderful. Everything's great. The world's going to get better. According to the Bible, it's not. <laughs> the Bible says that this has to happen. Uh, and we need to endure hardness as a good soldier. And many of you are going through things, financial things, job loss, parental loss. You're losing a lot of things. And it's hard. You have to endure. And when we've been in these messages, I'll just be positive. Everything's going to be okay. People are falling apart because they haven't been taught yes. correctly how to deal with grief, mm -hmm. loss, how to really deal with life because we've been in these church bubbles yes. and have been lied to. Yes. But thank God we've come out. So we can't stop what's coming. Nope. You can pray and decree and declare all you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we don't have to be deceived by it either. Right. And the more and more I see things because of what I've been studying and research, I, I see what the plan is and I see the circus and I see the fear porn. And we don't want to be caught up in that fear porn. Unthinkable things are commonplace now to go just to drive down in certain cities. People are getting shot, as we know, and even children, very sad. Carjackings in daylight, things you would have never seen three or four years ago. I mean, we've always had issues, but it's lawlessness. The Bible says there's going to be an increase in lawlessness. People aren't abiding by the laws. So in Matthew 24, what do we see there? You can turn there if you want. We see, take heed that no man deceives you. This is going to be all the way through. We have to make sure that we're not putting our trust and confidence in some political leader, some religious leader, uh, because these are going to join forces 
and cause extreme rights and extreme lefts. And it's going to carry away a lot of people because they're going to be deceived because they're putting their trust in man. So number one, Matthew 24 tells us, don't put your trust in man. Uh, there's going to be a massive deception. He says, you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. And now that we're hearing of that, what are we supposed to be doing? See to it that you be not troubled. And then why? Why all this stuff is happening? Why shouldn't we be troubled? Because he says all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Yep, right. yeah. The end is not yet. Yeah. So don't think it's the end. Right. It is things that happen, and we aren't to be troubled by it. But we are to be wise, like Joseph was wise in a time of famine. He wasn't foolish and just, I've heard people say, oh, I'm just trusting God. And some of those very people I had to give toilet paper to last couple, six months ago or whatever, because they weren't prepared for the shortages. So you've got you've to take care of and prepare in a wise way and know that there's, things are altering. Life is changing. And number one, take care of yourself. I've been doing a lot of these, and I don't want to get into this, but do, there's going to be times sometimes you've got to take care of yourself. You're not going to be able to just run to this doctor like you're used to. All these things are changing. Take care of yourself. Detox yourself. Um, do whatever you can do to take care of your body. We cleanse our car. We, I mean, we change our oil, but we never take care of our body. And so the last six weeks, I guess it'll be going in six weeks, that's what I've been doing doing detoxes, sin you know, sinus stuff. That's been my weak spot, wherever your weak spot is. But take time now to, while well, we still have some of these things available, these natural things that we can, that we can buy to take care of ourselves. Get that stuff now because you don't know. Prepare to take care of yourself. Does that make sense? And then it says in verse 7 that nation's going to rise against nation. There's going to be famines. We're already hearing of shortages. Pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, earthquakes where there never was, even a fault line or something. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, these earthquakes are happening. And it says what? These are the beginning of sorrows. Yeah. Not the end. It's the beginning of sorrows. And I want to kind of give a warning. This is kind of a warning one. What happened in the book of Judges? shows the gradual stages of how the Israelites, God's people, turned away from God. And they followed after other gods and the God of the Canaanites and other pagans. And this could also apply to, I believe, the United States and any other nation that has turned away from God. They've put in uh, leaders that have pulled us away from godly principles by design They've, they've um, remember, John F. Kennedy said presidents will be selected, not elected. Yep. And that's, don't be deceived by that because the whole political thing, you think you have a, a, a great say. Well, these end times are proving there's a lot of things that are selected. Yep. Amen. And you're deceived into thinking we can change it because it's the antichrist, it's the beast system yep. that we are seeing rise. So this also, this warning applies to the United States and any other country that's forsaken God and really not putting uh, Christianity in the place that it was, but they're getting now, we have a post-Christian culture, deconstruction of Christianity. There's consequences. When we don't do it the way God wants, there's always been consequences for nations. And the first phase is peace and prosperity. When people are serving the Lord and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and we, we have laws that you know, obey the Bible, there's always peace and prosperity. And then people, they all seem well, they served and they loved God. Same thing happened in the book of Je uh, Judges. But then stage two, something happens, apathy. People start getting, when they're not really seeking the Lord, we're not really hearing the Bible, we're not hearing the things that we should in church, now we're, we're, we're hearing about the culture. Don't offend the culture. Just let this in. Let this teaching come in. Don't offend this one. Uh, I'm going to deconstruct Christianity. But that means I'm going to turn away from it. I'm not going to build my house on, on the Bible. I'm going to build it on the culture. What 
is best for everybody. So we see this happening, and, it, and it's not new. It's always happened in the Bible. They started drifting from God. They, founded, they found reasons and excuses for not serving God and obeying him. Well, his rules are, rules are too strict. Well, he's old-fashioned. We need something now that the young people want. Doesn't matter. Whatever happens, they start making excuses of why they don't want to obey and serve God. Jeremiah 7, 23 through 24, God said to obey his voice, and you shall be my people, and walk in the ways God commanded them, but they didn't. They didn't listen to him. They didn't obey his voice, and they followed their own evil heart, and it says here, verse 24, they went backwards and not forwards. Going back into the sins that we were delivered of, out of, people going back into addicted habits that they were free of, they're not going forward, they're going backwards because their eyes aren't on the Lord. Stage three, is rebellion. Open rebellion and paganism. It takes rebellion before people get into the witchcraft and the sorceries and the secret societies. Uh, the people turn to other gods for strength and help. This God, even in uh, the beginning there, it just talks about how they, they worship the golden calf. Something about that golden, golden calf. And it's just so fast, they turn their eyes away from God and from the man of God that was coming down to bring their commandments. What did they do? They started worshiping other gods, the gods of their culture. And this is spiritual prostitution. It's uh, Israel's compared to a faithless wife who leaves her husband and she runs after other men. We're running after other gods. And in Judges 2.17, they went a-whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. There's a warning here. God warns them in Judges 10.12-14, I'm not going to deliver you anymore. He said, you've went a-whoring after other gods, and there comes a time when that cup of iniquity is filled, and God says, I'm not going to deliver you anymore. Cry unto the gods you have chosen. Wow. Cry out to them and let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Wow. Then number four, phase, after the idolatry, after the rebellion, after turning their back on God, What's the result? It's always the same. Famine, war, plagues, and then the people go into slavery. The Israelites were conquered by outsiders. They went through great suffering. It wasn't easy. When, when people turn their back on God, oh good, no more rules. Then what happens is they set themselves up and this demonic activity results in judgment, doesn't it? And the Trojan horse can also conquer from within, which I talked about last week. And it can be set up for a deceptive dictator to take over from within. Because the enemy wants power, and he wants power over people. And that's why they went into slavery. All of a sudden now they were bound, and they went through great trouble. Isn't that sad? They had to go through that before they'd cry out to God because they were running after those other gods and turning in like, just like the culture they were doing in paganism. And then what happened? Jeremiah 17, 5, they were cursed. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm whose heart departeth from the Lord. So how did all this happen? How did they get into these phases? The first thing is, they made a God out of a man. They started looking to man. They trusted in man. We have to get back to trusting in the Lord. And this is why they set up celebrity preachers. You, you start following a man and then they, they seem like they're on target and their truth and all of a sudden they bring in their slippery little deceptive things. The Bible calls them wolves. So we can't trust in man. Thank God for people that are serving the Lord. And, but we're seeing a lot of betrayals right now. We're seeing a lot of betrayals. Preachers you thought were really for the Lord are saying they're deconstructing their Christianity. They're no longer uh, following the strict 
rules of the Bible, but they want to accept everything and everyone the way they are. We don't need to repent. We don't need to change. So that's a big part of what's going on in the United States right now, and I'm sure other countries. But then what happened is the New Age movement is another bridge between biblical faith and paganism. They have to do this by phases. Because if they did it all at once, we'd spot it, we'd know it. Same thing with a lot of things. Politicians, a lot of things. Things are done. Even this agenda, 21 is going to be done in phases. It's not going to happen overnight. But little by little, you're going to start seeing all these things. The control and the inventory. Because we're starting to see the beast rising, dictatorship, and the kings of the earth. Verse uh, Psalms 2. In verse 2, the kings of the earth set themselves against the rulers. They take counsel together. They're having all these Bilderberg meetings and all these meetings. What are they doing? This is what they're doing. The Bible says this is what they're doing. So then the New Age has come in and it's total paganism with uh, Christianity. It's like it's all Christian, but its terminology has changed. And if you, you know them by their symbols, and I did a, a teaching on that, you'll know them by their symbols. It's more important today than ever to know the symbols, yeah. to know even some of these things that are coming out from the government and stuff. Yeah. If you know the symbols, you know what they're doing. Yeah. And if a preacher has these symbols, don't follow them because they're showing you who they are. But it's all undercover and this is part of the infiltration from within that the Bible says is going to happen in the end, ta end days. But even then, and the, when the Bible was written, they had wolves then, and he named names. I talked about that last week. So they do this all. They dress up this vocabulary and symbols to pass it off as Christianity. Yeah. So it's not so obvious. Then the Canaanites had temple prostitutes. And when Israel backslid, they had every kind of sexual perversion possible. We're starting to see this perversion. We're starting to see it in, on our commercials on television. Yeah. Stuff that you would just, you're embarrassed. You're like, whoa. And the rap songs, which I've never been into, but I've, I've heard ta uh, people talking about the lyrics that are going on, these young kids are listening to. Total perversion. Totally leading people away from a healthy everything. Anything natural. Yeah. And then remember, in the Canaanites, they had Moloch. They had to so uh, sacrifice to Moloch. Their babies, they do sacrifices. Because in the occult, they always have to have a sacrifice. They do. Christianity, we had one sacrifice. Jesus paid the price for us. It was his yeah. blood. Yeah. But in the occult and all this other darkness, they'll raise stars up and they'll take them out. Yeah. Yeah. This is what they do. This is... Why would you want to serve Satan anyway? You think he's going to be truthful and he promises you success and fame, but with that contract comes, they can take you out at any time when they're done with you. I said, you better serve the Lord. Uh, now occultism is becoming mainstream. And it really came in, I believe, through the Harry Potter. The whole Harry Potter series, everyone thought it was so wonderful. Witchcraft, so sorcery, and fortune telling and consulting with the dead, which is necromancy, is forbidden. Yep. It's forbidden in the Bible. Necromancy is talking to the dead. So why are these preachers saying they're going to heaven, talking to David, talking to Elijah? That is necromancy, and God wouldn't do that. God would not have them go and talk to dead people. That's why he gave us his Bible. So all these visions that they're having is necromancy, and it's forbidden in the Bible. In Deuteronomy 18... Verse 11, look at that. Now, if our nation suffer because it's turned away from God, we need to be faithful to God. Now, even Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were faithful. The culture around them wasn't. So they suffered. Good people will suffer because the bad people are, are doing so much. So in that time of trouble, we have to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego here. In Daniel 3, let's look at this. I'll just read it for you. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Here we go. Remember the kings of the earth? Nebuchadnezzar said unto them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you do not serve my gods nor worship the golden image? Here's that golden thing again. 
They're calling it the golden age. Uh, Nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if you be ready, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fire of furnace. And who is it that God shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, and this is how we have to be, we don't want to go through times of sorrow. God can deliver us. But if something were to happen, if not, O king, that we will not serve thy gods. You have to make a decision that you're not going to serve yes. the beast and its system and not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So that's what we have to do. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus and we have to make a decision that no matter what, we're serving the Lord. Yes. The, the stages when a nation turns from God, it was peace and prosperity, apathy and compromise, rebellion and paganism, famine, war, plagues and slavery. It just seems that men just doesn't learn. We keep following those same ruts again. In John 3, 19, it says, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. When you're walking in light, the men of darkness don't like you. The, the kings of the earth want to get rid of God and his people because they love darkness. Because you're like, well, what have we done wrong? They love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And we have to go to Jesus and repent for all of our sins. And some people don't want to do that, but it's so much better to do it. Just say, Lord, I need a savior. I need you to forgive me. I've made a mess of my life. And we have to do that continually, probably. <laughs> for everyone that doeth evil hates the light. Why do they hate the light? Because their deeds are evil. They don't want that light shining on them. And if they can get rid of the light, then they can do what they want without a guilty conscience. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be manifest. John 3, 19 through 21. And in closing, I want to do an article that I saw at Lighthouse Trails newsletter. I'm just going to kind of bounce around. It was the Lighthouse Trails from this month. What is truth? And I'm just, I'm not going to read the whole thing. What is truth? The reason the Bible has so much to say about truth is because Jesus Christ is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. The Bible exhorts us to prove all things. That's one thing we didn't do. We didn't know we had to prove our famous celebrity preachers. We thought they were telling us the truth. The Bible says prove all things and then hold fast to that which is good, that which is true. It commands us to expose the unfruitful works of darkness that oppose truth and have no fellowship with them. Have no fellowship with them. Well, I don't know what else to do. Have no fellowship with them because they're going to deceive you. Yes. Ephesians 5.11, Scripture warns there are severe consequences for those who, for whatever re reason, do not love and protect the truth of God's word. What's a biblical consequence? For all this stuff, well, we saw the judgment that they fell into. Well, what are we supposed to do? Revelations 22, 13 warns that those who loveth and maketh a lie, in other words, they turn the truth into a lie. They're lying to us. They will be among those excluded. They're not going to go to the new Jerusalem. They're not going to go because God says there's consequences. What we do in this life, there's consequences for eternity. He said, in Revelations 12, 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. This is what we have to have, our eyes on him and the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. This is a warning in Revelations. These people that are lying, their wolves are think they're getting away with it. They're not going to get away with it. In addition to this warning in Revelation, Jesus made 16 direct references to hell. 
They're telling us now there is no hell. Scripture says that they who receive not the love of the truth and believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Why? Because they believed a lie and they are damned and ultimately perish. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.8, that they all might be damned who believeth not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I'm not talking about if you fa fall or you, but they have pleasure in wickedness, pleasure in evil, pleasure deceiving children, pleasure molesting, all these different things. There comes a time. It's evident that there are serious consequences to what we choose to believe and what we choose not to believe regarding God's word. We don't just get to pick a scripture. And lastly, still from this Lighthouse Trails newsletter, worldly consequences. In a courtroom, witnesses must tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help them God. One little lie can totally change the nature of a court case. A little lie or a little leaven can completely transform something true into something false. Error is like leaven. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Truth mixed with error is equivalent to all error, except that it is more innocent looking and therefore more dangerous. God hates such a mixture. In today's church, many best-selling Christian books contain leavened statements, but the leaven, the error contained in these books goes large, largely unchallenged. People don't challenge these big name preachers hardly. As sales reach into the multiple millions. In today's progressive postmodern church, there seems to be little or no accountability for Christian leaders and authors who present false teachings. The only immediate consequence the authors of these 11 books seem to suffer is the attainment of celebrity status and a huge increase in their personal income. Instead of being held responsible for the leaven contained in their writings, these men and women are rewarded by the church and held in high esteem. And what is that called? Deception. And what are we supposed to do? Let no man deceive us, right? So Father, we pray in such a time as this, wars and rumors of wars, all these different things that are being fed and told us throughout the media, only you know what's true and what's not true. But we know the kings of the earth have a plan and we know we're not supposed to be troubled by it. We're not to be deceived by it, but we are to endure to the end. And we thank you, Father, for taking care of your people. We thank you, Father, for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, we ask that you would keep us from deception. And those that feel so bad about themselves and where they've missed it, Lord, I thank you that we come to you and we repent, we ask for forgiveness. And you said as far as the east is from the west, so you would remove. And I just pray, Father, that people would pray right now that if they are out of fellowship with you, that they're in some strong addictions or deceptions, that they would start to see there are consequences. And this is not the time to play games. This is not the time to see how far to the world we can step but we want to stay on that narrow path and give us the grace and the mercy and the strength to walk on that narrow path. In Jesus' name. And everyone said. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her and be sure to check out her YouTube playlists for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org website page and click on the Messages button on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported. On the main web page at the top right is a gift button. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Trade your helmet for a crown. At the altar